A master's proves to the academic institutions that you are very good at passing exams and you can dabble in the research world. You can create a very short, like 60 to 100 page thesis about a particular area. And it's really just like an extension of bachelors. But then a PhD, all of that changes. No one cares about your exam results anymore necessarily. I know in the States you do courses and that sort of stuff, but no one really cares about what you are able to do in an exam. It shifts to what you can actually do in the real world right now so that you impress your peers. Now think of it like this. I don't know if many of you are language learners, but when I've been learning languages in the past, I've been really focused on the academic side of things. I've been conjugating verbs. I've had my head deep in a textbook. I can pass all of the little quizzes inside the chapters and I start to feel amazing about myself. I'm like, I have got this. And that is what a master's is like. You're like, this this is great. I understand everything. Academically, it's all seeping in. I am good at this. And then a PhD is like when a new language learner goes out to speak to a native speaker and you go, oh no, I've really misunderstood how much I knew. This is way more difficult than I thought. Like I was really good in the safety bubble of my textbooks and my learning and my exams and my quizzes, but this is a whole new ball game. These are real experts and I really need to get up to their level quickly. And you do that by pushing yourself through these kind of mental blocks that are saying, oh no, you're not good enough for this, but you just keep going. And then slowly you learn the language a bit more. And that's just like sort of doing a PhD is you're now up with the experts and now it's about learning how they got to where they are and emulating that success. And you'll get there slowly but surely throughout a PhD, you'll get there. So in summary, with that analogy, a master's is about showing that you can learn and a PhD really is about generating knowledge with experts. A master's can be completed with the skills that you have developed broadly from your bachelors. You can pass exams, tick. Everyone loves passing exams at this stage. Oh, I was so good at exams, humble brag by the way. I would eat a banana just before an exam knowing that I've spent enough time getting all that information into my head and I'll spill it out into onto the page in a fantastic kind of uh, expression of how clever I am. And then in a PhD, the skills change quickly. You no longer have to think about exams. You no longer have to think about, well, how do I cram this amount of information into my head to spill it out later? It is all about entering the unknown. The way of thinking is so completely different that it does kind of like catch you off guard initially. And that's where a lot of imposter syndrome kind of comes in. Go check out my other video about imposter syndrome, where you're just like, oh my God, Everyone else is so much cleverer than me. How did I get here? I'm an imposter. And I can absolutely understand how that first sort of like exposure to academia just makes a load of people question their decisions. But hang on, hold in there because you will develop that new way of thinking. It really is a baptism by fire. It really is just like sink or swim. And if you carry on swimming and treading water, it gets easier and easier to kind of like fail at research and continue and learn how to read academic papers and learn how to speak about your research to your supervisor and others. And these are skills that you develop slowly but surely. And there are a few universities now that are actually giving explicit courses, but it's a whole new world and a whole new way of thinking. And uh, yeah, that's probably the biggest difference is there's nothing really to prepare you from that moment that you do your PhD. Do you know what? I actually felt dumber during my PhD than I did during my master's. And that's because of a little tiny quirk about academia is that the further up you go, the academic scale from your bachelor's, your undergraduate, to your master's, to your PhD, is that you know more and more about less and less. And in fact, I believe that I forgot stuff that I actually sort of like was very proud that I knew in my master's and my undergraduate, but it was being displaced by all of this other information about a very tiny part of the world. And that is kind of one of the biggest differences that I felt internally is that I really started to feel dumber. 
And even though I knew far more about a very specific field, it was kind of less impressive Maybe to me, maybe the way I interpreted people's interactions, but you know, when you say I'm an expert in this very tiny field, people go, oh yeah, and they kind of glaze over quickly. Whereas if you're kind of broadly knowledgeable, that's kind of like rewarded in like pub quizzes and general uh, interactions with people. And I think this is why it's important to choose a PhD topic that you're genuinely interested in, that you want to know more and more about less and less. And I think for me, I probably didn't choose the perfect subject because I felt like I was missing out on all of this other stuff. So yeah, just make sure that it is something you genuinely want to do because otherwise you'll end up feeling like you know more and more about something that doesn't even interest you. Here's a hot take. A master's is arguably a better return on investment. And I probably believe that at this point. A master's prepares you with kind of career um, focused skills that are actually rewarded in the real world, if you choose your masters correctly, that is. Whereas a PhD is seen as further education and training for academia, and academia doesn't care about your, you know, all of your skills. They just will suck you up, or they will mop you up if there's a space in their lab or in their institution for you. Whereas with a master's, I feel like there's still sort of some prestige, like, oh, I've got a master's in this. And then when you leave the ivory towers, the outside world goes, oh, that is skills that I like. Thank you. Here's some extra money. But in a PhD, in academia, as you're sort of progressing further up, you get to the end of your PhD and they're like, yeah, okay, you've, <coughs> you've <coughs> you're just getting over a cold. But as you get towards the end of your PhD, they're like, okay, yeah, yeah, you've passed the kind of basic requirements to get into academia, in you come. And it's not as well rewarded financially, maybe even socially. Um, and a master's is only two years, a PhD is much longer. So if you're looking for a good return on your investment, I think a master's is probably where you should stop. Writing. Writing and more writing and more writing. Do more writing, always writing. A PhD is full of writing, so much more than I actually thought. It's not only just sort of like your thesis, it's papers, it's your lab book, it's reports for uh, key performance indicators, it's internal admin stuff, writing for your peer reviewed uh, journal article, and also writing for like a conference presentation, a conference abstract, like it is just nonstop. There is writing at every single point, and at the end of it, you kind of end up with the biggest kind of like uh, boss challenge in the world for writing, which is a thesis. Your PhD thesis is just more writing. Whereas a master's was much more exams, a little bit of writing, a little bit of a taste of a thesis, but a PhD has got so much right, and I'm not a writer. I am not a writer at all. I really just didn't enjoy the process of writing, but I learned to love it. It was like some sort of weird Stockholm syndrome where I would lock myself in the library in the silent study zone, I would sort of whack down a couple of uh, really high sugar caffeine energy drinks and I would just write until I couldn't write anymore. And uh, it probably wasn't a healthy way of doing it, but I got through it nonetheless. Go check out my other video where I talk about the difference between a PhD thesis and a master's thesis or, or PhD dissertation. You'll really sort of like get an understanding of what the writing involves and just how you feel about it at the end. So go check out that video, that's very important. But ultimately, I think the message of this section is writing. Writing, so much writing. It's like I've got PTSD from writing. So much writing. So yeah, PhD's got a lot of writing. So there we have it, there's everything I think you need to know about the main differences between a PhD and a master's. Let me know in the comments what you would add. I read all of the comments and I love that you add so much to these videos. Also, there are more ways that you can interact with me. The first way is to sign up for my newsletter where you'll get five emails over about two weeks, everything from the tools I use, the podcast I've been on, how to write, how to write the perfect abstract, the perfect daily schedule and more. It's exclusive content, only available for free. Also, go check out Academia Insight 
Insider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide, the Insider Forum, and a blog. So go check it out. A lot of work is going into that at the moment. And I'll see you in the next video.